what the fuck is up higher point of view here it is your west coast packer backer here to talk about the packer second pick in the 2022 draft number at number 28 we got Devonte wyatt well shit yeah we doubled down in on videos today i wanted to give these two the respect that they needed give them their own video so i could tell you my opinion on them so i'm gonna take the hoodie off for this one um okay so another pick i'm motherfucking excited about and it was so easy and, and just so convenient to watch like uh their highlights in games i don't just watch the highlights because highlights are supposed to look good but i just watch games so i could see his play to play kind of deal if he has a motor this that and the third so uh y'all this motherfucker right here y'all a fucking dog i mean literally he's a bulldog georgia bulldog all he doing is changing the g you know the red g for the green and gold you know that's an easy transition ask eric stoltz that's an easy transition ask our first pick that i just told y'all about we on the same little uh we here although i sprinkled a little more on top because that shit was about to go so but back to this guy first of all i love him bro his get off is crazy bro his get off is crazy hey I, used, I was a lineman my whole life, you know, like, the, the, hey, we can work with you if you got to get off. We don't give a fuck if you bad at everything else. But if you fire off the ball when that motherfucker snapped, this motherfucker be in the backfield, bro. He's powerful. He's 24 years old. So he's going to be a lot. That's why a lot of uh, that was a lot of the bad talk about him, that he was an older guy. But listen, what we trying to do, we trying to win now. I already told y'all. I already told y'all our first uh, pick is going to be on the field. This ain't going to be no old Ty Summers or no Oren Burks kind of, you know, bringing them along. No, that motherfucker going to be playing early. And so is this dude. So our first two picks are guys we actually going to be looking at, you know, next year early because these guys are going to put in work. First of all, to get off, I told you it's crazy. The motor is crazy. To be this big, he's a 6'3", uh, 340. <coughs> no, he's not 340. Uh, that's fucking TJ Slayton and I'm going to compare them. He's better than Slayton though. Right now he's better than Slayton and right now he's actually better uh, than Kenny Clark was coming out of college. Now, will he be a Kenny Clark on his level and would he be able to do it like Kenny Clark did on the next level? Because it don't always happen. You could be better than him in college, but then, you know, they separate. There was a lot of people better than Devonte in college. So they say, you know, he was picked in the second round. Look what happened. Now he's one of the highest paid receivers in the league. But back to this nigga. The get off is crazy. He's in. He got skills, bro. He's always in the backfield, bro. Like he's going to be a tackle for loss machine also. And not only that, he's unselfish because with our linebacker that we picked with the first pick, it was kind of a good ass dope ass moment. I listened to the linebacker from our first pick, his call with the Packers, and they told him live like, oh, well, the Packers just picked your teammate, uh, yada, yada. He was like, what? No. And they was like, yes. He was like, oh, shit, that's good, you know, but y'all got to see. Hold up. Trash day and shit. My bad. But yeah. Y'all got to y'all got to see that. There was a moment where you know, they were talking to him about, you know, how he felt about getting drafted by the Packers and they told they told him right there like, "Hey, your buddy just got picked with the 28th pick." So, and to see his reaction and what he said was, "I love him because he don't mind taking up a block." I told y'all, them linebackers don't be like they don't like old linemen to get their hands on them. So, sometimes the D lineman job is to rush and try to get a sack, which this guy is good at, but also their job is to just hold up a block so that the uh offensive lineman don't get to the second level and the linebacker can get an easier tackle whether it's a tackle for loss or right on the spot hey football 101 y'all i don't know about y'all if y'all just fans and that's fine but like i actually played and i was really good like i'm talking about newspapers and shit so like i'm like you know i ain't make it but you know i know how motherfucking hard it is that and I know the X's and O's of this shit like y'all motherfuckers be getting mad at shit and don't even know what the fuck going on like y'all be getting mad Oh, why we get him uh do you see how good he is no because you don't understand what good is like that you know maybe y'all got to start you know educating yourself on the actual game and and bro but these two guys plug right in what the fuck we doing bro we and then again it ain't about who we get 
Nigga, it's also about who we already have. This motherfucker gonna be next to Kenny Clark. I already said that he's better than he was hit. He's better than Kenny Clark than Kenny Clark was coming out. Obviously, Kenny Clark was on the younger side of the draft people who came in. He was like 20 or something when he got drafted, 21. And this guy's drafted at 24. So maybe he's supposed to be better. But that means he's a grown fucking man. And another thing, like I said, when Kenny was coming in the first year, year and a half, he was getting punked just because he's a young cat and he had to start, you know, dealing with this grown man strength. These old linemen, they got families to feed them. It's these grown ass motherfuckers, they ain't playing around. They are trying their best for you not to get past them or for them to get to the next level and block so they could get a big play. So, hey, bro, he is legit. Like I said, motor is good so he can play multiple. You ain't got to worry about him getting tired. He's uh, he's coming out of the draft. He's better than Kenny Clark. That's two. His get off is crazy. Um, Again, he's always in the backfield. And again, uh, Georgia, anybody? We all in Georgia's backyard. Eric Stokes last year. And this year we get these two cats. Y'all if y'all got to start understanding how the Packers operate. When we like something and we go to a program, we like how the whole program is ran. And we like more than one player. What about when, when we were all in Iowa? Remember, we got Mike Daniels. We got uh, Micah Hyde. We got one more person now from Iowa. Oh, what about a couple years ago? Elton Jenkins, Kylan Hill. Even Preston Smith, they all went to Mississippi State. And we tried to, we were going for Preston Smith in the draft, but he went to some, he went to Washington. And then, you know, that's why we got him on his second contract because we wanted, we were interested in him anyway. Y'all, the Packers don't just make no decisions for nothing. They like, oh, we already like this guy coming out of the draft. We just didn't get him. Let's get Preston Smith now to help us out. Look what Preston has done. So this is, Preston Smith is just as good as a draft pick for us because he went to sorry ass Washington where people's careers are ruin see what they did to rg3 that's fucked up you know and haskins had to get up out of there because it was so bad so that's fucked up you know y'all didn't give him a fair shake so fuck hey fuck the commanders bro fuck y'all so uh, anyway where was we at with it but yeah man and then again sec bro bro sec what is that southeastern conference you know them big boys down the south them motherfuckers is big bro to be in that conference as a d lineman Bro, you got to be a motherfucking dog. And that's what he is, man. The, again, the motor, the get off, everything is legit, y'all. He can hold blocks and he can, he's always in the backfield, bro. And then again, I said, it ain't about what you just got is what you have. Nigga, you already got a steak at home. You could save some money. All you got to do is go to the store and get the potatoes and the asparagus, nigga. You know, instead of like you having nothing at home and then having to buy steak, potatoes and asparagus. You know, it ain't about just what you get. It's about what you already got. And then you put that shit together and then it becomes a perfect meal. So, bro. Oh, my God. Like we just solidified this defense for at least five years. We're not going to have problems out of this defense for five years. Stokes is on his rookie contract. We're going to give Jair the big contract. Fucking. Rasul came for for some chump change, bro. That's just we didn't even say nothing about Savage and Amos. Oh, so faithful and every always in the right place, Amos. Now look at the D line. What is what the fuck are you gonna do? You got you got you got T.J. Slayton as an afterthought now. So now T.J. Slayton's really gonna be that goal line. Even though now the guy we got right now, he is better than T.J. Slayton already. But again, he's a grown man already. And, you know, he's just faster. TJ Slayton's bigger. He's 340. This guy's like 310 or something like that. But this motherfucker could move, bro. This guy could move. So y'all going to see. Y'all going to love him. And, hey, we got rid of a dump. Devontae. We had to get another one. But this one. And then it with a dope name. Devontae Wyatt. That shit sound cool. And then another nigga named Quay. Nigga, that shit cool, bro. We got some cool names, you know. Who, who wouldn't love a jersey with Wyatt on the back? You know, shit, like Bray Wyatt. Like, nigga, and shit, Wyatt from Ozark. Nigga, that's three Wyatts I like already. <laughs> like, you know, come on, man. What? But, yeah, again, I'm very excited about this draft and what we're doing so far. It is day two now. I cannot wait to see what we do now. Now... We could probably get a receiver, but again, shit, if we get a pass rusher with the next one, I would not be mad, but I think the third and fourth is a, you know, a sweet spot for the re receivers for us, our third and fourth picks, I mean, not third and fourth round, you know, third round is the, the latest I want to see a receiver pick, I don't want, you know, so we will see, we do need to get one, but again, bro, what, what happened that time we went deep, we got like three receivers one year, and none of them panned out, like, come on, y'all, these guys just ain't gonna come over and do exactly what the fuck they were doing. Like Aaron Rodgers said with his own mouth. I didn't see a Justin Jefferson in the draft. So like, and again, 
Y'all motherfuckers want to trip off of like, oh, they're not getting Rodgers help. Did you see his temperament on that show? When they asked Rodgers, like, oh, y'all didn't draft uh, wide receivers, he just was like, he started naming out shit, shit that I already would named out. Hey, uh, shout out to uh, Packer, Packer fan for life. What up, Big Nate? Hey, hey, Roger said, Roger said, and I was thinking the same thing. Randall Cobb, second, third rounder. Hey, jo James Jones wasn't selected in the first round, you know? Neither was Donald Driver. Neither was Jordy Nelson. Randall Cobb was selected in the second round. So was Devontae. So, I mean, I don't think it's time to panic at all. And again, y'all, we got, bro, woo, we got two dogs. And then again, I know you guys are, you know, used to, uh, fuck that shit. We going, we going, yeah, I'm going to say that for another video. I ain't even going to go that deep in it. We're going to continue to talk about this dude. Actually, I'm done, but I'm happy with this motherfucking pick, y'all. And uh, I hope y'all are, again, look at his highlights, man. Look at his highlights. And it was so easy and convenient, y'all, to watch the highlights because they both play and they both on defense. So that cut my time in half. Normally, when I'm in the draft picks, I'll be up all night. I mean, I was up all night this time. I fell asleep on the national championship game that I was watching over. I watched the highlights. I watched their drills. And then I watched the, uh, the actual game so I could see them play by play, you know. And man, nigga, I was up late last night doing this shit, but I was so excited I had to, but it was so convenient that these two guys were on the same team. So now we got three Georgia Bulldogs on the defense. Joe Barry's got to be licking his chops. That's the way you treat a, a, a coach. You're like, all right, come in here, Joe. Come in here, Joe. Nobody think you're going to do anything. He turned our defense around last year for that to be his first year, y'all. Y'all got to be kidding me, man. If y'all not excited for this defense, y'all motherfucking crazy. Like, I know some people think defense is boring and all that, but, bro, I'm a defensive guy, bro. And you, for you to complain about these two picks now, complain about not having receipt, not getting a receiver, that's fine. But to complain about these two picks, man, you got to be out of your fucking mind. Hey, you sure is going to be cheering when he come up with a sack. You sure is going to be cheering when the linebacker come up for a tackle for loss. Nah, sit your ass down and don't cheer because your ass was talking shit when he first got drafted. Hey, again... Once they become a Packer and got the G on their head, first thing we got to do is, and Goody we trust, and just give them the benefit of the doubt that it's going to work. Then the second thing we got to do is not just give them the benefit of the doubt, but just cheer them on and want them to do well. They need all this good energy from us to want them to do well. I think we all help Rashawn out because when, when he first got drafted, people were complaining. Y'all motherfuckers always complaining, bro. And then, and then now they come become beasts. And now look, hey, A.J. Dillon got picked. Why would you pick a running back? And you see why now. Shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm out.